In today's video, we're going to make the ultimate 4-in-1 flip top tool cart. We're going to make the ultimate flip top tool cart. It's going to have four tools with it, a chop saw, a bench grinder, a bench sander, and I'm actually going to mount this router onto one of the two fold out wings we're going to have integrated into the tool cart as well using some pretty cool hardware. Let's get started. When you first start off making a flip top tool cart, there's two variations on the top itself. We have to make a choice whether the top is going to have the power cords integrated inside the box, so they're kind of hidden, and then when you flip it, the cords don't go everywhere. They're all drilled, they're all inside the box itself. The other type of flip top is where you're just going to have a couple of three quarter inch pieces of ply and the pipes right between and then the cords are managed on top so you can flip it as much as you want and the cords are kind of like rolled up on top by the tools. Today we're going to make the kind where the power cords are integrated inside the flip top cart and to do that we're going to have to make a hollow box and that hollow box is going to be using two by fours as the outside frame components. So when you're measuring up your flip top cart get your largest single tool or your combination of two two tools, put them on the flat top, measure out the 2x4 on the edge, make sure there's a good enough clearance for your tools, and then create that square, right? And then take your other tool and see if it fits inside the same square. So I'm going to put my chop saw on top now and see if it fits inside that same box. <clears throat> Looks like it'll work fine. And then be cognizant of where the mounting holes are for your power tools. So we're going to be putting some threaded bolts through the 3 quarter inch plywood into a kind of a receiving sleeve on the underside. So I've already lined up the holes and it doesn't look like it's going to interfere with any of the other hardware. Anytime you start a project, you just have to accept the fact that there's going to be bumps in the road. You're going to have to pivot. There's going to be something you're going to run into that you didn't think of during the build. You'll have to stop the build process and then just noodle for a bit to solve that problem at hand. It happens every time to me. That's just how it goes when you're building projects. You just kind of dive in, start with the first step, move forward, and then if something it just doesn't work right, doesn't fit, you didn't measure right, it's no problem. Just take a break, you can sleep on it, and then the solution typically comes to you. I want to maximize every possible inch of storage space and usage space on this flip top cart and some people will sandwich a full 2x4 in between the two 3 quarter inch plywood top pieces for the flip top because some people will put entire like electrical boxes to take care of the integrated power. I'm going to have uh, like a heavy duty power cord with a triple head on it to plug all three of the um, tools into. The router is battery powered so it doesn't need a plug in. And that power cord is going to be, you know, fairly thin inside the box. So I'm not going to need a full 2x4 to sandwich in between the two 3 quarter inch pieces of ply. I'm going to cut it 
in half with my track saw and use a half of a two by four as the sandwiching between the two pieces for top and bottom. So it'll give me an extra, I don't know what, inch and three quarter of space for storage and usage. So every, every decision I make on this build is very intentional. And you'll see that three or four times throughout the video. One suggestion I have, if you're gonna do any woodworking, I always recommend using hex headed wood screws instead of the Phillips. They're far better, they grip better, they don't, the head doesn't strip out rarely ever. I don't know why people still use Phillips uh, for woodworking. They just drive better. Um, if anyone has any like reason why you would still use Phillips instead of these hex heads for woodworking, let me know in the comments. Another thing on this project, I'm gonna do something I haven't done before. I'm gonna put a little round over edge on every single piece of the project. Um, just kind of a design idea I thought I'd have. I've never done it before. We'll just give it a shot. If you do decide to make the flip top cart that has the integrated power within the flip top itself like I did here, you have to make sure that you take um, precautions not to allow the flip top to rotate over and over and over again in the same direction. It'll end up binding the power cord. So sometimes people will put like a little lip on one side of the flip top so it can't, it'll only rotate one direction and then back the other way. I chose not to do that. Instead, I actually just took a black Sharpie and I put arrows in the direction in which I should flip the cart, uh, depending on the direction it's facing. That way I should never bind up the power cord. But if you do the other type of flip cup cart, where the cords are just on the top, you can just rotate as much as you want. All right, let's do a little catch up and summary of what we're doing so far. Um, it may not be evident what I'm building. Maybe this is the first time you're watching like a flip top tool cart instructional video. We've got the base built right here. This is the bottom. There's gonna be some casters going on it. Um, and here's the top. And then for the flip top itself, we've got, we're gonna sandwich between two three quarter inch pieces of plywood some two by twos, an iron rod, which will have inside of it the power cord feeding through it this way and out. And then on top of this will be another three quarter inch piece of plywood. So on the underside will be the chop saw. On this side, we're gonna have the grinder and the sander. And then all of that is going to slot into a hole on the base where that iron tube's gonna go in here, so the entire top will then rotate around that pipe. Because I want the top of this chop saw cutting surface to be flush with the top of the flip top box and the wings that come out, I'm going to have to recess the entire rotating table down the distance of that chop saw cutting height uh, base. So up here is the cutting surface. Here you've got the chop saw base where it sits, three quarter inch ply, the two by two here with the pipe hole, the lower three ply, and then the sander and the drill is gonna go down here. You'll notice that I offset this hole and didn't do it exactly in the middle for a couple of reasons. If I did it in the middle, this thing would split. And the other reason when I offset it, I want some meat on the top so the pipe doesn't have a tendency to push through and break through this piece of wood. It'll be sitting like that, but um, 
So now I'm about to drill this hole. All right, so I managed to get the flip top mounted inside the two walls and it actually rotates pretty good. Action's pretty smooth. I ran into one problem though. <clears throat> the sides bowed out on both sides by about an inch. And so what happened was I didn't have enough length on my iron pipe on the outside. So essentially I was gonna use these flanges and mount these flanges on the outside but since that didn't work out, I wasn't gonna have enough space for support. I ended up actually mounting those flanges now on the inside. So a little bit of noodling to solve that problem. Um, definitely recommend if you're gonna build this with these side walls, make sure you err on the side of having them be too far close than too far out because you just definitely don't want that pipe to slide out of the hole. So one way we're gonna keep the flip top cart from um, rotating when in use is we're gonna, we're gonna integrate an eye, an eyelet hook into this corner. So we're gonna drill out the top. I'm gonna to router in a slot, put this eyelet in each of the four corners with a bolt in the middle so this will be able to rotate out. So when it's in and locked, you rotate it in, lock it. When you wanna move it, you rotate it out and then this ro rolls out here and then you can rotate the, the, uh, the top around. For the wheel casters, I end up mounting two of them on the very front facing you or the user and then the back two I mounted on the left and right side because I want the cart to sit flush against the wall and not have the casters make it push out three or four inches. I want to try to make the most dust proof power port plug I can. So the idea is to measure out the, the size hole I need to fit two of these in. Um, not at the same time, but one would go first and then the other one has just have to fit um, the head plus the core. So I think I can get away with this size. And here's what we're gonna do. Here's our large hole. And then the idea is I want to make two side-by-side -side holes the size of the power cord itself. One here, one here. Drew, drill these two first and then go back and drill this one out. And I'll have a plug. Ideally, save this plug where I can put it right back in and just some light wood glue maybe, and create a kind of a dust proof plug as opposed to buying the plastic ones.
here's the very first time that I actually flipped the cart top over with all the tools mounted on it. So doing it really slow, I was just worried what might happen. There's a ton of weight on that um, pipe in the wood, but it turned out great. Um, yeah. There's a little bit of play when these are mounted to the wall. You can see there's like a little bit of a, maybe, I don't know, three or four millimeters. I want it to be perfectly 90, so when the board sits on it, I've got a really flat even. So I'm gonna add a couple of washers to the mounting side right here. So when it's mounted to the side of the cart, it's gonna be angled up a little bit, just enough to make this a perfect 90. So here's why I get to call this the ultimate flip top tool cart. I'll go ahead and highlight all the things. Integrated power, built into the box, runs through the pipe out here and into the flip top cart. Casters that maximize like the height storage so this thing sits flat on the ground once the casters are set in place. Uh, we've got a removable battery powered router where when not in use and this guy folds down it slides into this hole into the side for good storage. Um, got some slot T-slots for a future um, router guide. We've got the 
the little uh, spindles to lock it in place. Some good storage down here. I did not do a drawer. I wanted to maximize the storage uh, in this area instead of a drawer. Some people put a drawer in, but I put like this kind of an open area, storage area. And then of course, wing, the second wing on this side. And then you can see how level I got it. So I matched the, I matched the, the chop saw and then the wood height here so I can put a nice piece of wood. It's pretty level. It's almost there. Uh, thanks for watching, everyone.